In oxidation reduction reactions, electrons flow from a reducing agent to an oxidizing agent. And they flow because the free energy of the reactants are higher than the free energy of the products, so it's a downhill in free energy. You can think of it as a gravitational potential, as a ball on the top of a hill rolls down spontaneously. The electrons are at a high potential and want to flow down to that low potential. So there's an electrical potential between the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. And that electrical potential exists whether those are in physical contact or not. So I can set up a system where I have the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent in separate beakers. Here I've done a zinc electrode in zinc solution and a copper electrode in copper solution. Now, we know that the electrons want to flow from the zinc metal to the copper ions. That's the natural direction, the downhill direction of this system. But they're in physically separate beakers. The zinc metal is not in contact with the copper ions. But if we were to take a wire and connect the zinc electrode and this copper electrode, that would create a path for the electrons to flow, and they would take advantage of that. Flowing out of the zinc metal onto the copper electrode, where they can come in contact with copper ions, and those copper ions can be reduced into copper metal. So the chemical reaction of zinc metal reducing copper ions occurs, but it occurs in two separate flasks. As it occurs, electrons flow from the zinc metal, and this is through a little wire now, down to the copper metal. The overall electron flow is from left to right here, and a wire connects the two. In this beaker, what happens is zinc metal is oxidized to zinc ions, giving up two electrons. So an oxidation occurs here, and oxidation will associate with the anode of a two-cell reaction. At the cathode, the other uh, electrode of a two-cell reaction, a reduction will occur. So the reduction is the copper metal being re uh, the copper ions being reduced to copper metal. So a reduction occurs here, and we'll call the reduction the cathode. This setup I have here is called a standard galvanic cell. An anode and a cathode, an electron flow between them. One way that I remember this is oxidation and anode both start with a vowel, and reduction and cathode both start with a consonant. So that helps me keep straight the oxidation occurs at the anode in a galvanic cell, and the reduction occurs at the cathode. Electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. In this case, the two electrons produced by the oxidation of the zinc flow and are come in contact with copper ions and reduce the copper metal. So the flow is from an anode negatively charged to a cathode positively charged. So I can write down this cell potential here. There's special notation. I write zinc metal and a bar, and the bar indicates a physical phase difference. This is zinc metal in contact with zinc ions. And that describes this half cell here, the zinc metal in contact with zinc ions. Now, there's a double bar here. That's another connection. And what this connection is, is a salt bridge. Now, we need the salt bridge, and, and why is that? If we want this electrons to continue to flow, that continued flow would cause charge to build up on one side. What the salt bridge does is allow that charge difference to be equalized. So as negative electrons flow to this side, and copper ions are removed from solution, we can have positive ions removed from this salt bridge, and negative ions removed from the salt bridge here to maintain a charge balance so that a buildup of charge doesn't remove the potential for electrons to flow. 
So that's what our salt bridge does. And the salt bridge is in contact with copper solution, and there's a phase difference, and copper metal. So I actually have this cell that I've described here, this galvanic cell, and it's two half cells right here on the bench top. I have a zinc electrode in zinc solution, and I have a copper electrode in copper solution, and a salt bridge connecting them. Now, if I take the copper electrode and I connect it to a voltmeter, notice right now my voltmeter reads zero, but if I put the voltmeter between them and immerse the copper electrode in copper solution, notice the voltmeter reads the potential for electrons to flow from the zinc metal to the copper metal and eventually to the copper ions in solution. And the potential in this case is 1.1 volts. That's the potential for electrons to flow in a galvanic cell to separated half cells in a redox reaction.